Dallas Theological Seminary's Chapel Podcast. Tim McKenzie is our chapel speaker today. He's the founder and president of On Every Word Ministries. Uh, words taken from Matthew 4.4, 4. man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. This is a nonprofit ministry that seeks to inspire love for God's word and demonstrate the value and practice of abiding in it, both by instruction and example. Tim uses multimedia presentations to develop worshipful spiritual journeys that come from his heart and nourish the soul of his listeners. He and his wife, Suzanne, have been married for 28 years, have three children, and they live in Sugarland, Texas, which is near Houston. I'd like you to join with me in welcoming Tim McKenzie as our chapel speaker today. Well, good morning. It's my great privilege to be here. I uh, drove up last night from Sugar Land, a little suburb from Houston. I was born in Houston, raised there, and live in Sugar Land, and saw my good friends down in Corsicana, and glad to be here with you this morning. Um, you know, words are powerful things, aren't they? Um, words can heal or they can hurt. They can bless or curse. They can build up or tear down. I mean, each one of us have been the recipients of what Solomon calls the delight of a timely word. Um, you know it's power, right? I mean, the word, a proper word spoken from a, a good friend, a word of encouragement, um, a word of belief from a coach or a parent, uh, a kind word uh, at just the right moment from your spouse or friend. I mean, those things are so valuable and so precious. Words are incredible and amazing, and uh, each of us have you know, favorite poems or songs or these memorable lines that we can, uh, that, that come back to our memory from a speech or a sermon or a message, uh, something written in a book. I mean, just all of those things are, are powerful. Uh, just, I was thinking on the way over here, just the fact that we can even speak is a miracle that we often take for granted. Um, the fact that our lungs can produce a sufficient amount of, of airflow and volume and pressure uh, to go up there and be chopped up and dissected by our vocal cords that uh, produce audible sounds that are perfected and sculpted by our, our tongue and lips and cheeks into words. I mean, it's just an amazing, amazing miracle, isn't it? And we, we should just give thanks to God this morning for the power of speech. Um, you know, Paul, I was reminded of this scripture that Paul talks about in, in Corinthians where he said, you know, when I came and I spoke to you, you know, my message, you know, my preaching wasn't what? With persuasive words of wisdom. But it was in demonstration and power of the Spirit, wasn't it? Okay, so that his, his goal was what? That your faith wouldn't then, after he left, be resting upon the wisdom of men and the power of man's words, right? But that your faith would be built upon and resting in the power of God's words. Amen? And that's what we're here for. I mean, that's what we're all about here at DTS, isn't it? The privilege of speaking God's word. Now, man's words have limitations. Not so with God's, right? Um, the breath of God. I was thinking about just that concept, just the breath of God. You know, God spoke and all creation had its being, had its origin. God breathed out, breathed forth his word that we could know him. He, he breathed, the scriptures tell us that he breathed the very breath of life into man that we become living beings, right? This word that he breathed forth that we could know him uh, became flesh in this great mystery uh, of the Word becoming flesh that we could behold His glory. And then, you know, the Holy Spirit, who literally in my mind, I just see us as, as walking dead people, that the Spirit, of, the Spirit of God comes and performs divine CPR on our bodies to breathe new life into us of all that would be saved. 
And so this breath, this word of God, is an amazing and a powerful concept that as creator, he spoke all things into being. That as redeemer, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And that as um, sustainer, we are told that what? He upholds all things by the power of his word. Truly one day, those things will pass away like a whistling arrow, we're told in, in 2 Peter. When what happens? In my mind, when he quits telling him to be. His pa- the power of his word, things hold together. They have their consistency. They have their being. And when he says, stop, they're gone. Now, that's power. And I'm telling you what, I can remember four score and seven years ago or whatever, and I can, you know, we the people of the United States and, you know, powerful words like that. But I mean, those words don't have the kind of power that God's does. Um, In the beginning, the world was what we're told is formless and empty and dark. I think as people, those are three of our greatest fears, aren't they? And yet when God spoke, what happened? There was purpose, there was meaning, there was order, there was fullness and light. Just the same way he brings when he speaks a word into a life and recreates himself in that person. Um, His word does not return void. It accomplishes its purposes. We are all living proof. We are are stewards of this word. This word indwells us. It's It's an incredibly amazing, precious gift. I hope that when you pick up this word, and I hope this word is not just in your hand, but it's in your heart, it's on your lips, It's part of who you are, that you abide in it, as Christ says. But when we touch it, that we consider it for what it is, incredibly precious. Not man's words, but God's word. In the beginning, God spoke, and it came to be. And he gave creation a voice, all of its own. And this, this voice sings this incredible song. And if we, if we take the Scripture and we use it to listen to what creation is saying, its, it's, it's, it's verse and chorus become crystal clear. And uh, the message that I'm going to close with today is, is a message that, that invites you to look up and lift your eyes to creation and to hear its voice through the filter of God's Word. Now, creation is saying plenty enough, isn't it, without this. We can look at creation, and it speaks of the fact that there is a creator God. He made everything. All of this stuff didn't just happen. It couldn't just be ordered this way. You know, we, we, got, we can look in the newspaper and tell when the sun's going to come up in June to the minute. What does that speak of as an attribute of God? God's faithful. By his word, that sun rises and sun sets to such a timetable that we can post it in the paper. We can set our clocks by it, whatever. So, you know, there's plenty that we can learn of God just by, just by looking and observing creation, right? But when we use this, wow, it becomes so clear and so powerful. Now, today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the last segment from a greater presentation, Okay. Now, the full presentation, it's like 35 minutes. It wouldn't uh, fit here in the chapel today, okay, with us. But this last part does. And um, and so I'm going to have to walk you through a little bit of it just to get you to where I I want you to be. Um, Imagine that you have just journeyed through the seven days of creation. Each day... God spoke and things came to be, right? So like on day one, God said what? Let there be light, and there was light. I have no idea what that looked like. Sun, moon, and stars wasn't created till day what? Four, okay? I have a sneaking suspicion it had to do with a little bit of his glory being displayed and separating the light from the darkness. God saw that it was good. Great. God is creator. He spoke light into darkness I believe it. But each day has much more to say than simply God is creator. And so what I do is on each day, I'll take you a little deeper 
and we'll explore light, let's say, on day one. Because what? I'll quote other verses along with that verse um, from, cre- from him being creator of light, like, like the one in Corinthians where Paul says what? For God who spoke, what? For God who said, let light shine in the darkness, has now made his light. So what's he doing? He's taking creation, he's pointing you all the way back there, and he's saying, remember, God spoke that into being, right? Now I want to take you a little deeper, Paul says. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, has now made his light to shine in our hearts, to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. So see, if he can do it, then I can do it. He's using creation as an example to take you deeper. So I take you deeper into light all on day one, and about the time you get get tired of seeing images about light and hearing about light, I'll say what? And there was evening and there was morning the first day. And we'll go on to day two and see what God has to create on day two and what creation has to say to us about God on day two. So after you've gone through the seven days of creation, then now you'll get to this, which is my thesis from Romans 1.20, which you'll recognize and, and so, if you're an English major, I apologize. My thesis isn't at the beginning of the paper. It's at kind of near the end. And uh, the paper itself sets up the, the ending. I'll give you the thesis after you've seen all the evidence because when I, when I get to present these kind of scriptural journeys, I'm not always in a seminary. Um, I go from prisons to schools to conferences to churches, and I never know where people are in their particular scriptural journey or spiritual journey, right? And so... Um, So I want this to be very clear, the message that creation is proclaiming. And when I get to day seven and we're finished with that and God's rested and it's all good, we go to the thesis and then you're going to see what I'm really wanted to drive everyone to as far as what I want them to take away and take home in their minds and in their hearts. Today, what I invite you to do is to witness a demonstration of the power of God's word alone. None of the words you're about to hear will be my words. In fact, in this entire presentation, there is, um, I believe, um, 19 different books of the Bible represented um, and 250 verses. Now, you won't hear those here in this last little eight-minute segment. But I want I tell you that not to brag about how many scriptures are there. I don't do that. But I want, to, I want to tell you one little story that I think would be a great encouragement to you. And that is, a while back I was speaking at a, a, a Christian school in their chapel. It was a high school. And there was a, obviously the girl that came up and spoke to me afterwards was new to the school. And she was a freshman. And I did this, this presentation you're about to see. I did it as an entirety. So she saw the whole thing. Okay, so remember... 250 verses, 19 different books of the Bible, right? So what did she say to me? She came up and she said, wow, did you write that? (laughs) Okay, and I was tempted to say, what? Yeah, yeah, of course I did. No, uh, uh, no, what I said was, no, God did. Okay, and her eyes got super big, which was indicating to me what? In all of her innocence, she didn't know the Word of God. She probably didn't know God. She was new to the school. But you know what it, what it proved to me that I continue to say over and over to groups that I meet with is that she doesn't know this Word, and yet even though it has 40 authors, 40 writers, it, she knew that it only had one author, right? And she thought the author was me. She got the continuity and the consistency and the unity and the power of this succinct word, even though I was taking her a journey across all, a lot of different books. Okay, that's that power that I want you to experience today. That's that power I want you to be encouraged by. Instead of just auditing this particular thing and saying, wow, he can memorize scripture or whatever, I want you to get lost in the images and in the power of God's word that he's going to put up on your heart and be encouraged today Uh, to not take for granted what you have in your possession today and go forth and speak his truth, okay? It's like it says in Deuteronomy, it is not an idle word for you. Indeed, it is your life. Amen? Okay, so join me as we worship together the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, 
Since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, His eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made, so that men are without excuse. And yet some will still say, Who is the Lord that I should obey His voice? But do you not know? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood since the earth was founded? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. And he will not grow tired or weary. And his understanding no one can fathom. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? Oh, but ask the animals, and they will teach you. Or the birds of the air, and they will tell you. Or speak to the earth, and it will teach you. Or let the fish of the sea inform you. For which of all these does not know that the hand of the Lord has done this? For in his hand is the life of every creature, and yet the breath of all mankind. And who has directed the spirit of the Lord, or as his counselor has informed him? Will the one who contends with the Almighty correct him? Does the clay say to the potter, What are you making? Even the Lord himself asks you, Where were you when I laid the earth's foundations? Tell me if you understand. Who marked off its dimensions? Surely you know. Who stretched a measuring line across it? On what were its footings set? Or who laid its cornerstone? While the morning stars sang together and all the angels shouted for joy. Who shut up the sea behind doors when it burst forth from the womb? When I made the clouds its garment and I wrapped it in thick darkness. When I fix limits for it, and I set its doors and bars in place. When I said, this far you may come and no farther. This is where your proud waves must halt. Have you ever in your life given orders to the morning? Or have you shown the dawn its place? Have you journeyed to the springs of the sea? Or have you walked in the recesses of the deep? Have you comprehended the vast expanses of the earth? Oh, tell me if you know all of this. Have you seen the storehouses of the snow? Or have you entered the storehouses of the hail? Can you bind the beautiful Pleiades? Or can you loose the cords of Orion? Can you bring forth the constellations in their seasons or lead out the bear with its cubs? Do you know the laws of the heavens? Can you set up God's dominion over the earth? Can you raise your voice to the clouds and cover yourself with a flood of water? Do you send the lightning bolts on their way? Do they report to you and say, here we are? Oh, who endowed the heart with wisdom? And who gave understanding to the mind? And who has the wisdom to count the clouds? Or who can tip over the water jars of the heavens? Do you know when the mountain goats give birth? Or do you watch when the doe bears her fawn? Do you count the months till they bear? Or do you know the time when they give birth? Do you give the horse his strength or close his neck with a flowing mane? Or does the hawk take flight by your wisdom and spread his wings toward the south? Or does the eagle soar at your command and build his nest on high? Oh, the depth of the riches of the wisdom and the knowledge of God. How unsearchable his judgments and his paths are beyond tracing out. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. 
His understanding has no limit. He has made everything beautiful in its time. And he has also set eternity in the hearts of men. And yet they cannot fathom what God has done from beginning to end. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. To whom then will we compare God, or who is his equal? You answer us with awesome deeds of righteousness. O oh God, our Savior, the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas, you alone are the Lord. You made the heavens, even the highest heavens, and all their starry host, the earth and all that is on it, and the seas and all that move in them. You give life to everything, and the multitudes of heaven worship you. So praise the Lord from the earth all of his works everywhere in his dominion and let them praise the name of the Lord for his name alone is exalted and his splendor is above the earth and the heavens let everything that hath breath praise the Lord for great is the Lord and most worthy of praise the Lord is good and his love endures forever and his faithfulness continues throughout all generations. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. Amen.